you know, be warned. If you're like me and a bit nerdy and interested in all this techie stuff, you will disappear down the rabbit hole. Hi there, welcome to another edition of PDM Vlogs. I'm Neil and I'm going to be talking today about impulse responses, particularly using them in reverbs. Uh, so we've done an episode before about impulse responses using the guitar cams uh, and in particular I'm going to compare them to um, algorithmic reverb, so reverb which is basically software model. I've set up a little project as per usual, but before I do that, it's just a quick reminder of what uh, an impulse response is. An impulse response is basically a small WAV file um, which contains the sonic signature, um, in the case of a reverb, of a particular space. Now usually they are created by um, setting up a speaker in the space and a microphone or set of microphones and either having a, a sharp, short noise like a gun going off or a crack or something you know, quick or, as far as I'm aware, I'm not an expert on this, running a sine wave from 20 hertz right through the kit 20 kilohertz and you know, measuring the bottoms off that. So um, how the room responds to the complete frequency range. And then that is converted into a kind of sonic fingerprint, if you like. And that then is when you're using that convolution reverb is then blended with your original signal to create this new reverb. So what I've done in the uh, project is basically compare the algorithmic reverb for the convolution and then with the IR loader, which we looked at in the last episode by Redwires. Um, called Mix IR3. And um, I will also be talking a little bit about some of the convolution impulse responses that I picked up free from the sound of the yeah, That's quite interesting. So let's quickly go through what we've got in the project. We've got, so in terms of instrumentation, we've got um, some vocals, some guitars, some piano -y stuff, and some percussion uh, drums. For the guitar piece, I'm using uh, a guitar riff that sounded for um, the Remain soundtrack. So this formed the basis of the Remain soundtrack. So I came out with this and I built um, a soundtrack around it. We've got vocal stuff. This is all being provided by um, Spitfire Audio's Aleph Lens 3, which is a great little plugin, um, and it's got some really interesting vocal samples on it, so I thought I'd use those. Piano is courtesy of our good friend, and that's Spitfire Audio. We do like Spitfire Audio, which is a hand a piano, a huge and expensive hand in piano. I love it, so I thought that would be ideal for testing it out. We've also got um, Heavy Osti's ensemble, ensemble. <laughs> drums, which gives us that big, cinematic, powerful drum sound, which I think would be ideal to test with a big, long reverb. So those are the instruments we're using. In terms of the reverbs, so I've got four reverb sends set up. The fourth one is just um, um, to do on the vocal test, just to show you a particularly massive 20-second re reverb. But the others are all on separate sends. So the first send is the algorithmic reverb which in this case is good old Steinberg's uh, revelation which is kind of our go-to reverb for the most things um, it's included with artist and pro which we both use so it's a really good sort of basic reverb so i have used the cathedral natural preset that seems to sound closest to um the convolution reverb i've used Convolution reverb is good old Steinberg's reverence. A bit of a theme going here, I know, but there we go. Um, so I've taken this New York City Church uh, preset um, and it has a seven, about 7.3 seven second delay on it. So it's, it's, a, it's a big old reverb. Um, and that seemed to be closest to the cathedral setting on the algorithm. I mean, they're not identical, but it gives you some idea. So those are both send, send one and two. And basically, I've set the automation to switch sends between each sample. So on the project, um, we go have the same repeating file, identical file, um, first through the algorithmic, then the convolution, then the, the IR loader in each one. And then the last one is just the fourth reverb send, which is basically got a massive rate of reverb on it, just as it sounds like. In terms of the IR loaders, again, we're using Redwire's Mix IR3. So we've got this particular reverb, which is recorded at Hamilton Mausoleum. I'll come to the source of these in a minute, but um, 
it's a massive reboot. It's a 50 second reboot. So what I've done to make it comparable is you can adjust the length of the reverb and I've dialed it down to about the same length as the um, Reverence Convolution Reverb in New York Church. The fourth reverb is recorded at an old nuclear reactor hall. I think it's in Sweden, I'll check it in a minute. And it's huge, it's 20 seconds, massive, that's a great tail off. Uh, I just thought it'd be nice to show you what it sounds like on my end. Uh, both. Let's just have a look at some of the resources I've been and these are all free resources, so it's pretty amazing. So first of all, this page, Open Air Library, is a library of IR responses taken from various um, locations, both in the US and over here and in Europe. Um, and there's an absolute ton of them. And they're, they're all really well done. Uh, some of them are like 96 kilohertz, some of them are 48, some of them are yeah, 44.1, but they're all sound really good. And I've been using this, this Hamilton Mausoleum one, and it gives you lots of information about the location, it gives you a map showing you where it is, should you want to go and visit it, some images of the setup and the, and the location. So it's a very sort of unusual space, but it's quite an interesting um, rebirth tale. Um, some waveform and audio examples, uh, all the acoustic parameters, and then do you actually created it. Um, so I'm using that one as a, like a main comparison and I've also got this, like I say, this nuclear reactor hall which is yeah, near Stockholm, which is a massive space it, and again you've got pictures of how they set it up and recorded it and the space uh, when you download it it comes with these pictures and a text file with lots of information on the recording and how it's set up and you know, how to record it, all that sort of stuff. So lots of information. So for a free resource, really good, and some really interesting spaces. The other one it, which I've been experimenting with is uh, Boxing Go, who do some really interesting plugins. They've got a free download of Reverb by ours. Um, and the interesting thing is they're all created by a uh, thing called Impulse Modeler, which is one of their plugins, um, where you can specify or create a room and the software will work out. Uh, a reverb for it, which is um, so I might actually get, end up getting hold of this because I'm quite interested. But you can specify the materials, you can uh, do all sorts of wonderful things, so it, it's quite an interesting thing. And some of the impulse responses coming off it sound really good and uh, really interesting. So it's actually creating virtual rooms. Uh, the other one is um, called Echo Thief, uh, and again, this is mainly around the US, um, but there are again some fantastic, interesting spaces and some great sounding responses so worth checking out. Uh, and then finally there's this Lexicon 480 set of IRs from this chappy um, and again lovely selection and they do sound rather good as you expect from the Lexicon 480. So plenty of free resources out there um, and like I say worth checking out. So we've got our thing set up and I think pretty much ready to go. So let's um, run the tape, as you say, and uh, you can see what they sound like. I'll comment after the the run through, but let's just run it through and see what happens.
So, there you go. Um, my thoughts, um, whew, difficult to pick between the, the three. Um, I think the Convolution and the IR versions have a more kind of interesting natural tail off that sounds a bit more real. Um, the algorithmic sometimes seems to sound a little bit more processed. Um, but again, the algorithmic seems to kind of evolve a little bit more interestingly. Um, so very difficult to pick. I would probably, for this sort of beaver, go for a convolution because I just think you get that mass integration into space. The, I mean, the R1 um, sample for that last vocal sample is just huge, and, and I love the sound of it. So if you're looking for that sort of thing, I think they're very, very useful. Um, but for sort of everyday use within the context of a mix, I don't think you're going to hear a massive difference. But, but yeah. Have a, have a look yourself, do some experiments in play and see what you think. Okay, I think that's all from this episode. Um, if you've got any uh, queries or comments, then by all means add them at the bottom. That's it from me. See you next time with some more interesting audio rabbit hole stuff. Mm -hmm.